to our distinguished guests and families, to the Board of City Trust, headed by the Chairman Ron Donatucci and the Vice Chairman Bernard Smalley Esquire, to our Vice Presidents Sylvia Bastani and John Tucker, our beloved academic and residential deans, Dr. Michelle Williams and Ms. Amber Alexis, to our esteemed faculty and staff, our renowned graduation speaker, Ross Gay, and to the resilient and distinguished class of 2020, welcome to Gerard's virtual commencement ceremony. I take great pleasure in welcoming you to this special event. It is not the ceremonial graduation you were hoping for that would allow you to share this moment with all of Gerard, your family, and friends. Nonetheless, it is a special moment of celebration and thanks. First, I want to salute you for your success. You have completed your journey at Girard College. Well done, class of 2020. Consider this achievement the first of many in your life. I am extremely proud of your class and I can't wait to see what you'll do next. This is also a time for Thanksgiving. In the midst of a time where there is challenge, grief, and the unknown, you can give thanks for all that you've gained here. In addition to the diploma you've earned, you have lifelong friendships, lasting memories, and a place to call home. To the parents and families of our graduates, this is your moment too. Take a look and feel rightly proud of all that you and your child have accomplished together. Thank you for trusting us to go along with you on this journey. Leaving home, particularly a community as special as Girard, isn't so easy, but know that all of us here at Girard are cheering you on. I encourage you, in the words of my heroine, Dr. Maya Angelou, allow this commencement to paint the beginning of a certain end. Let it also be the end of a sure and dynamic beginning. So let us begin. Good morning to the young men and the young women, the graduating class of Girard College 2020. Congratulations to you, to your family, and to your friends who have helped to get you thus far. On your behalf, I offer this prayer. At this hour, when another class goes forth from the guardianship of this school, we thank thee for the good providence which has followed its members through these years of preparation, for the privileges and opportunities which have been theirs, for all the influences that have surrounded them here to form their minds with the power of knowledge and to mold their characters for true living. May they look back with gratitude over the years that are gone and forward with courage and hope to the years that are to come. May they realize more and more that thou hast placed them in this world to honor thee by doing good as they have opportunity. May they be ready for every good word and work and may they do earnestly and faithfully whatever life sets before them. May your good deeds as you go forward, reflect who you truly are. Congratulations to you, to your family, and to your friends. All the best. Originally, when writing this speech, I assumed that I should take an approach where I discuss all the memorable moments, obstacles, and celebrations of being a student at Gerard College, and ultimately how to overcome and get through this adventure successfully. But in all actuality, there's no way to truly capture every moment, every celebration we attended, every late night conversation we had, or every rule we broke in a speech. Things constantly change because we live in a time now where we will be able to watch this speech years from now. And I wanna say something that sustains. We are all individuals with complex minds who faced different journeys throughout their lives. As student body president, I want to refrain from telling you what to do or how to feel right now. That's just unrealistic. All I want to offer here is hope and share with you the way I am processing the world we enter after we graduate. Since we've been in quarantine, I've spent much of my time reflecting on my life, 
Perhaps you have done the same. I keep coming back to the same question, who am I? A very good friend asked me this recently, and not until this moment did I realize how difficult this question truly was. It feels like it should be the easiest question of them all. I mean, I spend the most time with myself than any other being on this planet. So why is it that this three word question has me so stumped? After a day of really thinking in depth who I am and reflecting on how I evolved with my mental and spiritual journey, I came to the conclusion that I, Justice, am an individual who wants to better the world by exhibiting universal love. While writing this speech, I decided to do my own social experiment and ask a variety of people this daunting question, who are you? To those who have helped me with this and were vulnerable enough to answer this question, thank you. Most people start with the basics, of course, their names or nicknames, occupation or identity itself. But these answers are identical to millions of other people in the world with the same age as you, the same occupation, the same identity, or even name. Going past this layer is much harder. Most people don't know who they truly are. I've been spending much of my time broadening my mental horizons, and I've realized that most people are just reacting to life. You all have programs set in your brain based on your environment that has allowed you to reenact everything and everyone that's presented to you, especially as a child the years your brain develops the most. That's why so many people are stunned when they see these children who are gifted with remarkable talents like learning seven different languages or learning how to play the instrument. Yes, those kids are amazing, but it's not from them being so gifted most times. It's because this is the education they were introduced with and programmed with at such an early age. And yes, you do have the same potential. It would just take reprogramming of your brain and your subconscious mind. But I'm getting off topic here and that's a different lesson to discuss. The point of me saying this is to show how everyone lives lives that mirror their environment. Simply put, the quality of your life is determined by how you define yourself. We all know this to be true, so why are you paying attention to everyone else around you? This extreme care for external opinions is just an internal hungry for outside praise. Consequently, this causes you to forget and possibly never learn how to connect with your own thoughts and your own emotions. Our daily routine of school, work, and retirement, just being a part of society creates a habit that numbs us into being a compliant members of a crowd. Follow the rules, pay your taxes, stay in the lines, Play your part and you won't be bothered. Then you wonder why you're so emotionally brought down by stereotypes and carrying around these feelings of uncertainty and unreality. If anything, this pandemic has jolted our society and given us a moment to question everything we do. It's time to turn your focus inward. Once you know yourself, I promise you, you will develop a tremendous change in your life. Ideas are where reality takes form. For instance, a man had to imagine a chair for it to become real, right? So my thoughts become reality. So I am a product of what I envision myself to be. So if I think to myself, Justice, you're stressed and you can't do this, that's what I'm gonna be. Now, if I think to myself, Justice, you're the happiest you've ever been. You're unstoppable. You're doing great. You're living life lavishly then who's living life lavishly? Me. <laughs> but I must make a choice and you must do the same. If we don't decide, the world will decide for us. Hi, my name is Maborni Conte and I remember the first time I ever spoke in front of the entire student body in chapel. I was in the first grade in Miss Duffy's class and I was chosen to give a speech about my homework assignment from the night before. For our homework assignment, we had to write about what we were thankful for. Now, that week was the first time that I had ever tasted an American Thanksgiving meal. Something that wasn't 
curry chicken or plantains or plantain or jollof rice. On my plate, I had turkey, string beans, stuffing, then mashed potatoes. Now, six-year-old me was amazed by the mashed potatoes. So I wrote down that I was thankful for mashed potatoes and I definitely did say it in front of everyone. However, this wouldn't be the first time that Gerard introduced me to something new. Being at Gerard, I was able to experience a lot of things that I would have never been able to experience at home. From my first Halloween parade where we dressed up as Michelle and Barack Obama to my first water day where I had to be sent to health services because I injured myself in the dunk tank. Nevertheless, I had a pretty interesting experience here. The most interesting was watching each other grow up. We went from the Polar Express parties to parties in the hum. We went from playing monkeys on the swings to flying, dodging, to dodging flying footballs in the courtyard. We witnessed each other's first crushes and first heartbreaks. And I like to think that the hardest lessons are those learned the hard way. Whether we like it or not, we really are we really are brothers and sisters because we definitely fought like one. Whenever our grade was divided, there was always some event that snapped us back together as if nothing had ever happened. And that bond helped us get through the ups and downs of high school. Our grade definitely wasn't the easiest to deal with. In middle school, there was always some building meeting about something that we did during the school hours. And if it wasn't building meetings, it was mandatory study in the auditorium with Ms. Holmes or dorm floor meetings with Ms. Clark. It's like whenever we met up, we just didn't know how to act. I guess our younger selves just knew that there was more to life than rules and regulations. And no matter how draining school was each day, we always found a way to make the most out of each and every day. Even though we weren't the best behaved, they could never say that we didn't do what needed to be done at the end of the day. We didn't allow our misfortunes to define us as individuals. And throughout the years, I've seen you guys do some amazing things. And I know that even if we never cross paths again, you'll grow up, you'll go on to do to be successful in your own ways. There were times where I would stop doing what I was doing and I would look around the room and I would just take in the moment and I would look at all of your faces and I would just feel so proud about how far we've come and about how much further we have to go. Watching each other grow up is definitely a bittersweet thing. And I used to think graduation was so far away and that we had all the time in the world to just be. But if I've learned anything, it's to live in the moment and appreciate what you have before it's gone. Because none of us would have ever thought that our senior year would be cut short and that we'd have to limit our interactions to the Visionaries group chat. Live in the moment and remember that you are still young. Don't stress yourself out about what you can't control and stressing yourself out about the future. Make more memories. Play Just Dance in the dorm. Battle it out on Cavalier Day because those are the memories that will last you a lifetime. Thank you. Thank 
I first arrived at Gerard in the 10th grade. I went to a public school in New Jersey, and after my freshman year, I wanted to transfer to Gerard. I wanted to transfer because I wanted to attend a school that would provide me with exceptional academics and the extracurriculars required to be a strong candidate for top universities. Although I was looking forward to attending Gerard, it was a new environment and I was nervous. I was shy and reserved when I first got here. But over time, I was able to feel comfortable with everyone. I started to feel welcomed at Gerard. And along with that feeling of being welcomed, I realized that I didn't just transfer into a boarding school. I transferred into a family. And what is a family? A family is a group of people you care for, who care about you. People who deal with the same struggles as you. You laugh together, you cry together, you get mad at one another, you forgive each other. And most importantly, you love each other, and I've grown to love you guys. From the teachers, RAs, students, and especially the mighty class of 2020. There are priceless memories I've created with all of my family members at Gerard that will be dear to me. For example, I will never forget what it was like living in Merchant and Mariner, from waking up to an RA flickering the lights, or Mr. Garrett calling a floor meeting, or when he would make cinnamon buns as a reward for us not getting into too much trouble. But my favorite days had to be the snow days. On snow days, everyone was relaxed, blasted their music from their dorm, and just enjoyed themselves. That was when everyone was the most carefree. During the school day, we had a door decorating contest and spirit weeks. The most memorable for me was this year's hallway decorating contest across the entire high school. It had a ton of Christmas themes that included Home Alone, Nightmare Before Christmas, The Grinch, and The Polar Express. 
Now, I know the class of 2020 will always remember those energized and heated debates in Mr. Shet's history class. We were all passionate about our ideas and thoughts and were ready to let everyone else know that they were wrong. Within the classroom, teachers like Mr. Sheth, Ms. Richmond, and Ms. Walsh pushed me to be the best that I can possibly be. And after school, we had a large number of extracurriculars available to us. I dedicated a large portion of my time to soccer, the Junior Achievement Program, and the Dual Enrollment Program at the Community College of Philadelphia. This year, the soccer team made it further than it has recently. We made it to the championship. We didn't win the final game, but being able to say we we're one of the top two teams in the league says a lot about our teamwork and dedication to the sport and each other. Also, junior achievement was a great entrepreneur experience and I learned many valuable lessons during my time there. And I will still remember when Gideon and I nagged Dr. Williams endlessly to buy our stress kits. Thirdly, as an 11th grader, I was able to take college level biology and sociology courses. Being on campus with other college students as a high schooler was a significant part of my academic development. It showed me that I can handle the pressures of college and succeed if I put my mind to it. Along with making memories, I have also learned valuable lessons from my Gerard family. One thing I have learned is how to be more open-minded. Over the years, hearing everybody's views and stories has opened my mind to new concepts and has changed my view of the world. Being in this kind of environment has allowed me to be more receptive to people's backgrounds and how I perceive them. Being around this many brilliant, amazing people of color within the Girard environment, which has proven people of color greater opportunities to succeed, has been an amazing experience. I would not have received this life lesson at my previous high school. Another lesson I have learned from my Girard family is how to persevere. High school was not easy. Often it felt like Gerard life was difficult. Everything was constantly changing. Despite the obstacles, we persevered and we created the best situation for ourselves to succeed. We took advantage of the opportunities presented to us and made the most of them. We were able to find a balance within it all and that speaks volumes about how powerful we are as a family. For example, like Beyonce and Amaya starting their nonprofit organization Next Up, Gideon and Jasir starting their own businesses, and Donovan having a successful high school track career. These are just a few of the wonderful things I have seen the 2020 visionaries accomplish during my short time at Girard. Now, we have become a family. We have learned life lessons together. We have persevered. We have become great together. With all that being said, I know there will always be barriers in our path from natural obstacles like the coronavirus pandemic or societal obstructions like being subject to socioeconomic struggles. But we've made it this far. Who says we can't go farther? I'm going to speak these words into existence. I love you all and I know we will be the greatest class that Gerard has ever seen. I love you, Mom and Bernie. Thank you.
Good morning. My name is Ishmael Cisse, and I am the senior class president of the visionary class of 2020. Wow. Never would I have imagined that my senior year would come to a halt due to a pandemic. As you all know, the world has drastically changed in the last couple of months, and daily life is now vastly different. However, this crisis will not stop us from changing the world. It will also not stop me from addressing my class, the visionaries of 2020. I am extremely proud of my class. We have finally made it. After all the twists and turns, the expected and unexpected, we are finally here. This pandemic will not stop us from pursuing our greatness. We are the future. We need to make sure that we lead this world to glory to make sure something like this will never happen again. I truly believe that we will restore balance in society because we are resilient. We will persevere. When I first arrived to Gerard, I almost immediately wanted to leave because I felt alone, lost, and empty. You guys were always there to keep my spirits up. The bonds I have built with every single one of you are unbreakable. You taught me how to show emotion, taught me how to be open, taught me how to have fun, and taught me how to stand tall and firm under any circumstance. There are so many memories that I want to talk about, but we'll be here all day. Just know that I greatly appreciate and cherish every single one of those memories. Our class will go down in the history books as the greatest class of all time. Yeah, I said it. The GOAT class. Like I said before, this pandemic will not stop us from pursuing our greatness. Congratulations to the resilient and visionary class of 2020. I love y'all and before I introduce a guest speaker... I'll leave you guys with a quote from LeBron James. It is time to chase every dream, accept every challenge, strive for greatness, honor every promise, and recommit to your community. Thank you. And now I have the great honor of introducing our commencement speaker, Dr. Ross Gay. Ross Gay was born on August 1st, 1974 in Youngstown, Ohio, but grew up in Pennsylvania. He earned his education with a bachelor's in English and art from Lafayette College, a master's in poetry from Sarah Lawrence College, and a PhD in English from Temple University. Ross is a big fan of poetry as he went on to become the author of three poetry books, Against Which, Bringing the Shovel Down, and Catalog of Unbashed Gratitude. He is the winner of the 2015 National Book Circle Award, and the 2016 Kingsley Poetry Award. Ross spends most of his free time writing a bunch of essays. One of them, known as the Book of Delights, was released in 2019. Ross is also co-author with Richard Wingberg Jr. of The Chapbook River. He is a founder editor with Carissa Chen and Patrick Russell of the online sports magazine, Some Call It Balling. Most notably, Ross is a founding bound member of the Bloomington Community Orchard, a nonprofit food justice and joy project. And now, let's give a warm Gerardian welcome to American poet Ross Gay. Hey everyone, I'm so glad and lucky and grateful to join you, Gerard College graduates, for your graduation. I want to congratulate you for everything you've done to get here, and I want to congratulate everyone who has been a part of that process. I'm happy to offer a few words of encouragement or observation or maybe even advice for this day, this commencement, which means, did you know this, a beginning? I am 45 years old, I have a PhD in English, and I'm a college professor, and for all these years I've gone around thinking commencement must mean beginning and ending, since these addresses so often happen at the end of something. Well, I looked the word commencement up since I was writing this commencement address, and you know what? I was wrong. Commencement does not mean an ending. It means a graduation ceremony, and it means a beginning. So this talk today, I am really thinking of as an offering for a beginning. This is an offering for what will commence. But first, I want to mention that I think the convention of the commencement address Almost everyone I can remember, I've been through a few, though I don't recall a whole lot about most of them. Though I know for certain I was not on a cell phone because it was before cell phones. Though it was not before spitballs or daydreaming 
or intricately folded notes, all of those were still flourishing in my day. Whether it's a high school commencement or college or beyond, has a more or less similar idea. And that idea, in addition to going out to do great things or taking the world by storm or being successful, is something along the lines of gaining your independence. I remember my own college graduation speaker. Sorry to say, I remember nothing of my high school graduation ceremony, who reminded us, implored us, I mean, berated us, I really mean. This is the only thing I remember him saying, for I was deep in glorious daydream, to pay back our student loan debt. That's really all I remember from that graduation address, which left me thinking if the goal of graduating college, the goal of this education, the goal of education is paying back your debts. Unless, of course, your folks paid for you. That got, got you off the hook for that one. Of course, he didn't say that college should be free, which it should. I think he meant, yes, pay back the banks, but he also kind of meant, I think, whether he said it explicitly or not, that we ought to free ourselves of our debts. We ought to unshackle ourselves or liberate ourselves of our debts. That we ought to be indebted to no one and no thing. He was probably in some way making an argument that we all know, and a lot of us kind of believe, whether we know we believe it or not, which is that freedom means being indebted to no one and no thing. And maybe even that being indebted to someone or something is sort of humiliating and embarrassing. That it's something to be ashamed of, pay your own way, don't owe anybody anything, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's part of an old dream of independence, an old equating independence with freedom. You all know what I'm talking about, given as the Declaration of Independence was signed probably not even a mile from your school. You've probably taken a field trip there. You probably had a test on it. You probably got an A. Side note, I probably did not get an A on that test. I often did not get A's on tests. I don't know if I ever got an A on a high school test. <laughs> Maybe once in 11th grade social studies with Mr. Bricker. Maybe one English test. It was unusual for me, just saying. And you've probably heard the one about bootstraps, how you're supposed to pull yourself up by them, whatever they are. You've maybe read some kind of book or seen some kind of movie or show about someone who's totally self-sufficient, who's gonna be fine and dandy when the power goes out or the supermarkets are all empty or a meteor hits because he can do anything with his pocket knife and ingenuity. When I was a kid, this kind of person was called MacGyver from the 80s hit TV show. They probably could change the oil in their car or fix the VCR when it was jammed. But the point of all this is that I think we sometimes think of graduation as crossing a threshold from dependence into independence. Once you graduate, you can begin to stop asking for help because you know you're growing up. Or at least you are at the beginning of the journey of growing up. And when you reach your destination, you will need help from no one and no thing. You will be independent. You will be in debt to no one. And importantly, you will be free. Well, I'm here to tell you on your graduation day, on this day of beginnings with much glee that none of that is true. In fact, all that talk of independence and self-sufficiency is a big, dumb, heartbreaking lie. It's a lie because we are always held in the arms of some caring, some care that makes it possible for us to stay alive, no matter how independent we think we are. Someone carried us in her body. Someone fed us, someone taught us, someone gave us directions somewhere along the way, how to get on the train or bus. Someone drove the bus. Someone said, here's your stop, honey, maybe in a language not your own. Someone tutored us or helped us with our homework. Someone let us a quarter so we could get a snack. Someone said, no, no, don't do that. Someone said, well done. Someone or something introduced us to something we will love for as long as we live. Someone picked up the trash or replaced the stop sign or put the backboard back up when that big kid down the block dunked too hard. Someone said, yo, look at that rainbow. Someone said, hey, you have to read this book called Braiding Sweetgrass, it'll change your life. Someone told us their dreams and asked us about ours. Someone listened when we were scared, when we were hurt. Someone pulled us out of traffic when we were looking at our phones. 
or when the bus hopped the curb, they grabbed us by our elbow hard and tender at once. Someone said, heads up. Someone said, take mine. Said, try again. Said, don't stop. Someone said, beautiful. Someone said, you got it. Someone said, you got it. If we think about this at all, we can go on and on and on. In fact, one thing I will unabashedly recommend to you, one bit of advice I will offer is that you think about this and go on and on and on. Yes, I recommend we do this a little bit every single day. If you don't already do this, today is a good day to start. Not to mention, which is to mention it emphatically, every one of us eats food and drinks water and breathes air. Every one of us is dependent not only on the farmers who plant and tend the food that we all eat, and the people who bring the water to the faucets and the people who keep the air breathable, but we are also and especially and unfathomably dependent on the generosity of the earth. Everything we eat, every single thing, despite how much we might mess with it, comes from the kindness, the generosity of the earth, as does the water from a glacier or stream or lake or spring or rain cloud and the air, the trees and so many of the plants I'll make it good to us. The trees do this for us. The trees care for us. And all of it, every single thing depends on the sun. Remember the sun? Let's always remember the sun. All of this is to say that we are constantly in the midst of and the products of incredible caretaking. In more ways than we can ever imagine, we have been taken care of. And without that care, we would be no more, like no more. No one is self-made, no one. That's another of those bogus myths. Every so-called self-made person has had help. And often that help has been coerced or stolen. But it is not a myth that we make each other, that we are made by each other. And even, I wanna go this far, that we are each other. Let me say it again, we are each other. We always need to practice recognizing this, but a pandemic sharpens our focus because our need for each other, the ways that we make each other's lives possible, the ways that we are each other is glaringly evident right now. If we get sick, we obviously need the doctors and nurses and EMTs and all the people doing everything they can to save lives. But we also need other things from each other whether it's wearing a mask in the store, or someone to pick up our groceries if we don't feel great, or checking on that neighbor, or calling our grandmother, or watching a sibling, or getting medicine for an elder or a younger, or staying home if we can, or washing our hands, or texting our friend who's really struggling right now and figuring out how to keep our distance while also figuring out how to help, how to say, I need help, how to need and be needed, how to be, in other words, interdependent interdependent the practice of interdependence and by practice i mean not only acknowledging our interdependence as a fact but also praising and honoring and exalting our bottomless and beautiful and sometimes difficult mutual need for one another which is not always easy and which is why we need to practice it might have another name too and that is gratitude for truly understanding the depths of our need, our dependence. Again, if this feels difficult, just remember the sun, the trees, the rain, the soil, all that we so obviously do not live without. And then think of your family and friends, and your teachers, your coaches, your neighbors, all the strangers who are kind without even trying to be. They just do. All of whom we also do not live without. Brings us into gratitude. Truly understanding the depths of our need and what gifts have risen to answer those needs, that might even overcome us with gratitude. I suspect plenty of you can think of your time at Girard, some of you three or four years, some of you for 12 or so years, and recall times of great joy. This is a day for recalling those times. And I'm going to guess that the times you are thinking of, the times of deep, and abiding and genuine joy, the feeling I get when recalling these times is of great light in my chest, 
or maybe even of geese lifting off a lake in my chest, are moments when you realize you were so deeply connected to others that you were kind of insep inseparable. Moments when the boundaries between you and others got kind of fuzzy or slippery. I'm gonna guess that at least some of those moments, if not all of them, were moments when you were in deeply flourishing interdependence, where you were with and for each other, where you were in fact each other. The feeling of joy, I'm gonna say, is the light that shines off that togetherness, that withness, that interdependence. And the advice I'm going to offer you today is that you consciously and willfully graduate into interdependence. By now you know I mean graduate into practicing your interdependence, celebrating your interdependence, practicing depending on others, and practicing being a person on whom people can depend, practicing needing and being needed. Yes, I said practicing needing. This will be difficult for some of you, but you're graduating. You're at the beginning of something and a challenge is good. And practice what follows needing and being given. That's gratitude. Again, gratitude is the natural expression. I should say it's the natural grown up expression of understanding our interdependence. It's good to know the immature response to interdependence is not always gratitude. It is often resentment or anger or sullenness, but we're moving always toward maturity. And when I say we, I mean me, as my therapist reminded me yesterday. But back to gratitude, which is the natural grown-up expression of understanding how much we need and how much we are needed. Gratitude is the natural grown-up expression of understanding how much we are given. And gratitude, born of that understanding, born of practicing that understanding makes us more generous. Gratitude makes us more loving. Gratitude makes us more able to care and be cared for. Gratitude makes us more well grown and it makes us happier too. I wish you luck and joy and fun and beauty and care and practice and love in this new beginning. And I wish you gratitude unbounded. I'm so grateful to you. Congratulations. Good morning to the Board of Directors of City Trust, President Washington, faculty, students, staff, alumni, families, and friends. I present to you the Class of 2020 Candidates for Diploma. Lanaya Britton. Beyonce. Brown Eric Carpenter Maborni Conte
Jameer Ellaby Wright. Jasir Fisher. Mikhail Garrison Nelson. Gideon Green. Kanisha Green. Elizabeth Hernandez Santa. Deja Horsey. Makai Jones. Samir Logan. Edward MacArthur the Fifth. Henroy Mitchell Collins. Azane Moore Grimes. Kayla Ortiz. Kalel Parsons. Tamaya Patterson Stewart. DeAndre Porter. Kenyatta Powell Hudgens. Justice Mickens Ricketts. Donovan Sanders. Najia Sanders. Ishmael Sese. Jordan Smith. Nasir Smith. Aquil Stewart. Malik Thompson. Justin Wiley. Amaya Williams. Kabanu Witherspoon.
to the Board of Directors of City Trust, President Washington, faculty, students, staff, alumni, family, and friends, I present to you the graduates of the Class of 2020. Congratulations, seniors, on this wonderful achievement. Had the coronavirus not affected our daily lives, I would have, as president of the Girard College Alumni Association, extended these sentiments to you in person at the senior dinner. And at that dinner, you would have been formally inducted into the association, and a GCAA pin would have been placed on your jacket lapel. You will still receive that pin, and you will receive an additional gift from the association in celebration of your commencement. Whether in person or by way of video, this is an opportunity to suggest that the association will be a way of you giving back to benefit your brothers and sisters of Girard in the future. Whether it's a year from now, 10 years from now, or 50 years from now, the GCAA will be present to support things like class trips, scouts, holiday parties, or any other number of activities that you may have experienced at Girard. The Girard College Alumni Association will continue to support our brothers and sisters after graduation with graduate school scholarships and with any surplus funds not being used from the graduate scholarships being directed to the administration to assist with undergraduate scholarships. Now you may not be ready to participate right away as you may have financial and time constraints with school or other activities. But I hope that when you are able, you will. I take enormous pride in addressing you, knowing that the GCAA fought to ensure that each of you had the opportunity to walk through those gates as citizens, no longer children of the great republic. Congratulations, seniors, and hail Gerard.
Thank you for joining us for our virtual commencement and congratulations again to the class of 2020. Hail Gerard.